Costco. <laughs> All right. Here we go. We got apple juice in the bottom left. And in the top right, we have Jason. Juggernaut Jason. You can check him out. He streams. I'm sure he's streaming right now. All right. There's not a Costco on PEI. That's incorrect. That is incorrect, Spooky Ghost. We drive to Halifax or Moncton. Moncton's closer. Or order. Yeah, it's not big enough. Yeah, Moncton's great. Especially the monster truck shows there. Am I right? No regret. Maine is getting its first Costco. Congratulations. That's amazing. Yeah, we didn't have a Costco in New Hampshire either. We had a BJ's Whole Wholesale Club. That's where we went. Same exact thing. Sam's Club? No, we didn't have Sam's Club, at least when I lived there. Maybe they do now. I don't really know what New Hampshire has anymore. The only thing left of value in New Hampshire is my brother and his wife. Costco is on the low rung of hierarchy of needs for civilized society. 100%. 100%. Honestly, I don't drink any juice. Drinking juice is like eating a candy bar. What the fuck is the point? All right, let's talk about this game a little bit, right? We have the two gate opener here, uh, one proxied, and that's going to be a stalker being chrono boosted out. Now, Jason's making his uh, command center on high ground, so he should be fine. Prune juice? My wife actually did buy me some prune juice. I, I tried some. It's okay. I don't I don't drink it regularly or anything, but I have tried it. But it's okay. Honestly, like every now and then when I'm at the airport only, I'll have a glass of tomato juice. What? And, uh, five occasionally in a hotel. Like juice. I don't stream. YouTube rolls out dub video feature for creators to upload multi-language audio tracks. Maybe consider recording your stream inputs into separate channels so you could upload videos with retard and non-retard audio to YouTube. Yeah, I've considered that in the past. But I'm a little bit lazy, so... Don't know if that'll happen. Anyways, Apple Juice right now putting some pretty heavy pressure on, but Jason is killing a hell of a lot of probes. See the probes coming up, trying to make a citizen's arrest here on this Hellion. Nice. Very good micro. Keeps it alive. Huge damage on both sides. Huge. Uh, you know, all these units are heavily microable, but you gotta decide what you're gonna micro. Dude, if Jason really... I can't believe that Apple Juice is not pulling for a flank there. I guess he's super heavily microing the rest of his units, looking for a kill in that regard, and hoping that Jason screws up. And you can see Jason's micro here is poor because he's focusing on damage as well. So both sides getting some pretty massive damage. At this point, as Jason... You may want to consider, like, canceling something. I don't know. It's getting crazy, right? If you cancel your command center and the game goes long, you're fucked, though. Oh, uh, he gets a cyclone out. So, that, I mean, as soon as you have that cyclone, you're fine. Normally. Like, look at that. Oh, dude, Apple Juice doesn't even pull it back. That's crazy. It's crazy. Nor dude, normally you'll just pull that back immediately. Oh, dude, sick. Good scan, good follow-up. Huge damage from Jason. Apple juice, GG's. juice. All right. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, the one hit point, Hellion. If that had been snapped, that would have been a problem.
So we'll be going in game number two here, just momentarily. Is there a ferry to get to the mainland? Yeah. There's also a bridge. It's the longest partially ice-covered bridge in the world. Did you know that? It's a long fucking bridge. Fascinating. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, we're going to get into our next game, guys. Yes, I have Polish family roots. That's what Stumkowski comes from. All right, let's go. Game number two. Yes, lots of red sand. The mud that gets tracked in my house is all red. It's really kind of weird. All right. We got down in the bottom right, apple juice. Top left, Juggernaut Jason. Do I eat pierogies? Uh, sometimes. Had them uh, last week. We had some pierogies for dinner. Tasty. All right. Well, I mean, it's early game, so really there's nothing to fucking say yet. I don't know why I'm saying all right. I'm like ready to commentate, but there's nothing to say. Because we're in the early game. And it's a two-player map, so they know where each other are. So there's not a whole lot to, to guess about. Oh, by the way, I, I should mention that uh, tomorrow CNSL Season 6 resumes on Artosis cast. We've been cast putting on the uh, Starcon vids, VODs, whatever, uh, from that land in New York City. But tomorrow... We will have, uh, we'll, we'll get into the rest of CNSL. We're almost done it. So, uh, for the next week or so, I guess it'll be that. Or I think it's a little bit more than a week of odds left. So, yeah, definitely check that out. All right, so... Well, I mean, it's some, some harassment here. It's kind of annoying. Jason's trying his hardest not to let this get zapped. Dude, in Brood War, that fucking probe would already have bodied that SCV ten times. Why is... Why in StarCraft 2 is it mostly 1v1 maps? Uh, pros don't like maps with more than two spots. Uh, the tech comes very, very quickly, so there's not a whole lot of play in the early game. So that randomness can fuck you up, I guess. Well, of course it can. It can in StarCraft 1 as well. Uh, honestly, can I be honest? Pro gamers have too much say in StarCraft 2. That's why. We talked about this last week. Because most of the maps look the same. And it's like all two-player maps and stuff like that. Pro gamers have too much say. That's why the only time you see four-player maps are in GSL. Because GSL says, fuck it, this is what we're doing. Yeah, the game is too balanced. Way more balanced than StarCraft 1. Here's the thing, guys. I don't I don't think like if I was a pro I'd be arguing as well. I argue I argue with people about StarCraft 1 tournaments, right? When Zen said the Stark on LAN was going to be best of one in the loser bracket until, like, top four or whatever it was. Yeah, I think it was top four. Uh, I argued with him, and I was like, no, you really shouldn't do it that way. And, event and he just said, no, that's the way we're going to do it, and what can you do? It's fine. I went and played. And uh, honestly, at the end of the day, he made the right choice, because if the tournament was any longer, we would have been kicked out. So, you know, honestly, I respect people who just say fuck it and do what they want to do. 
even if I don't like what the tournament is, right? All right. Hmm. Oops. Sorry. Uh, there shouldn't be any problems with sound. Just FYI. If anyone's having problems with sound, you should probably just restart the stream or something. I just checked all my settings. It looks all normal. Uh, yeah, StarCraft 2 did not have lurkers until uh, Legacy of the Void. But Legacy of the Void is over six years old now, right? So, Anyways, uh, let's take a look at the builds that we're actually seeing here now. Right, as we kind of get into the game. Looks like Apple Juice is doing uh, a blink robo build you know obviously these are the most popular builds that we have for openers in this matchup jason's putting a little bit of pressure on and not much and there's not a whole lot he can do anyways against this a raven is coming out third next is coming up i actually didn't catch the number of gates i wasn't really paying attention hmm Uh, Dark Shrine follow-up. Okay, so, yeah, this is a three-gate robo uh, with Blink into third base into Dark Shrine. So that's that's kind of novel from Apple Juice. That is definitely not a standard follow-up to see a Dark Shrine here. I honestly don't even know what to think about it because it doesn't feel like it's a smart move. It's like, it's definitely not solid. Okay, let me, let me put it that way. This is not a solid move. Uh, but it that doesn't mean that it's not going to work. Like, I would say over the course of time, let's say this is the only build you did, you would start losing a lot of games when people figured it out, right? Uh, because the Dark Shrine costs a lot of money at this stage in the game. But he has the Prism. Maybe, you know, I could see this being like this tricky move that actually does pretty well because your opponent is like blocking Blink and not thinking about turrets, not thinking about saving mules, that type of thing. But your army is going to be super, super soft here. And the thing is, he made a raven. Is the raven going out? I actually didn't catch. No, there it is. So, see, that's a problem. That's a big problem. But there's always a possibility that you snipe that and then utilize the DTs to, like, slow push, that type of thing. Yes, medevacs are troop transports. That's correct. And they boost and they heal. It's like a dropship and a medic put together. Appreciate seeing some Brood War fans in here trying to learn about some StarCraft 2. Yeah, so the DTs come in and really don't do anything, right? So he's gonna he's gonna end up losing the Prism and two DTs. Getting four kills? Five kills? Six? And losing a bunker. Honestly, that's better for Jason. Uh but like apple juice has three bases right i don't know his gateway count right now it feels like it's going to be very low considering where we're at this game this it may be like to go colossus plus one charge thermal lance behind the failed dt drop feels off to me it does feel off to me i like how he had raven next to dt but scanned anyways yes this is a funny thing let's talk about that for a moment actually that's a that's a very funny thing to point out right because you'll see things like that. And it, now I'm not talking about you, particularly the guy that pointed that out, because I think you just pointed out that that's funny. But I've seen people in the past sometimes be like, wow, he's really bad. Why do you do that? I would never do that. And it's like, no, no, no. This actually shows how good Jason is, that he doesn't even think he instantly scans when DTs are there. It's like you don't even think about it. You just instantly scan. Right? And definitely I've done shit like that, where I have a science vessel out and I scan instantly when I hear a DT or whatever. It, because it's so much about reaction time, right? So, like, that actually shows his level more than that he's bad. It's not like he doesn't... It's not like he looked at that and thought, like, I don't have detection. It's more like automatically clear the DT immediately. So, yeah, it's kind of a... I like seeing something like that. It's one of the highest level mistakes you can make. All right, so... Uh, right now, yeah, Armory coming up. Third Command Center going to go land. Uh, Jason has left a big uh, window of time here for Apple Juice to make the DTs not matter. This is an important 
uh, thing to talk about and to think about in super high level StarCraft, where, like, let's say the DT drop fails. The thing is, if you don't punish it, that, that somewhat failure gets made up really quick. Like, look at the probe count. He's got 70... No, I'm sorry. He's got 68 workers. Uh, Apple Juice does. So, like, his workers are really good. He's about to be four bases. Basically, those DTs and the, the prism that died, if somehow you counterattacked immediately after that, that, like, let's say you had an attack ready and you attacked immediately after you clean that up, well, you might win the game. But if you wait a little bit, then suddenly Protoss is catching up. And if you wait longer, Protoss is catching up more and more. And eventually it's like this very slim thing that happened that doesn't really matter as much anymore. So, yeah, it's like you definitely want to try to pressure your opponent. But if, obviously Jason knows the position he's in. He's maybe sitting there thinking, oh, okay, I don't really have what I need or what I feel comfortable with moving across the map. But no longer does that DT drop where I was like, oh, yeah, I would say Jason's a bit ahead here. That no longer really applies to this game, right? Over time, these things, uh, especially looking at it from the Protoss point of view, it's like it doesn't matter as much anymore. You have more expendable stuff. Okay, so comes in and actually catches a little chunk of Jason's army. It's not a game-ending chunk, but it's a chunk. All right, killing off some of these, uh, some of these mines. Prism coming in. AJ getting ready for something, man. He's just, he's standing there. Okay, here we go. The warping. Big round. But six zealots. Oh, no. Three DT. I'm sorry. Three DT, three zealot. Now, when this size of army comes in, I think you attack immediately. Yeah, that's too many units. That's too many units you attack. Jason's going to be in trouble. He didn't split right here. Yeah, see this? Cleaning up. Oh, bad control. Bad control. Uh, his Colossi stayed way behind his army, and he kind of let them fight there for a moment. Didn't zone out the uh, incoming Raven as well. So this actually ends up working out fine for Jason. He's losing, like, an okay amount of uh, SCVs. Like, that's that's certainly painful. But he's getting rid of all the high-value troops from, from Apple Juice, right? So when you get an equalizing move like this, well, it's not exactly equalizing. Uh, obviously, like, there's been a lot of SCVs that have died. But basically, you killed both armies, right? There's a little bit left on both sides and a little bit more for Jason. But when that happens, Protoss is forced into Disruptor. So if you keep highly, like, a high pressure after this, you're in very good shape as Terran. Or you, you definitely can be in very good shape after this. Uh, because when you look at the actual armies that they're making, in this regard... Uh, it's more like Protoss. Now, th this is not exact, guys. And I know you're going to be like, oh, well, re, this is because you play Protoss in StarCraft 2. I don't play StarCraft 2 anymore. But uh, Protoss is trying to replace units out of the Robo, right? So it's kind of like Mech in StarCraft 1. And then the Terran, it's like, okay, well, they just kind of instantly remake the same exact army they just had, right? Because it's like the Starport makes some medevacs and you didn't really lose those anyway. And then you make Marine Marauder. Right? So you're actually, you're having this very powerful army still. Your composition isn't as heavily affected as Protoss's is after army wipes like that. That's why Protoss has to go into disruptors from here. Uh, and that's why you see a bunch of disruptors here. Now, obviously, as time goes on, he can rebuild into a more normal comp. But I'm just saying, that's kind of the, the place we're in right now. So, anyways, comes up. He's, he's poking the sides. Jason is playing like a very... Um, passive game based on what's been happening maybe some fear in there okay surrounds the turret yeah the dt's drawn into the side and then apple juice comes in this side and a mass dt warp and damn dude apple juice uh by the way he is getting dt blink but he doesn't have it yet so <laughs> definitely makes a difference there oh wow okay good pick good pick okay he's gonna clear those you have to attack as Jason, I think. Uh, he's just going to GG, which is fine. Uh, things were starting to go wrong there. Kind of an interesting one. I do feel like Jason had two opportunities there where maybe pressuring a, a bit after Apple Juice overextended a little bit. 
could have been good, even if you're not necessarily getting damage, keeping Apple Juice on the back foot, making sure that he's making units, making sure maybe that he's adding some shield batteries, maybe a little bit less pro production, that type of thing could have been helpful, a little bit less upgrades, you know, those types of things, right? Um, but yeah, yeah, that's, uh, it, it didn't go down that way, but that was, that was a pretty good game. I like that game. Well played by both sides. We get in game number three here. Oh, you're talking about the visual distinction. Yeah, there is there is some of that. Um, it doesn't help that StarCraft 2, you can choose your own skins, right? Because you can actually make shit really look alike. I remember there was a lot of complaints about some of the skins because of that. At one point, there were certain skins that were banned in competitive play because it would be, like, hard to see overlay. Dude, we're not in the game yet. It's starting. It's calm. Let's calm down. We're getting there. What do my lips taste like? They taste like coffee right now. Here we go. Game number three. Yes, double pregnant overlay. Very good. Okay, we're on Royal Blood. Bottom left, we have Apple Juice. Top right, we have Jason. I did actually... Hotels are one of the only places I ever drink juice. I don't know if you guys are like this. Like, I'll eat a little bit different when I'm at a hotel. Because they always have, like, a breakfast, right? So I'll go down and I'll actually eat the breakfast. So I'll eat, like, these things I don't normally eat. But uh, I did have a glass of orange juice at the hotel. When I was there with my kids, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. They're all having juice. I'm going to have some juice. Had a little glass of orange juice. First time in a really long time. It was pretty tasty. It was pretty good. Brand muffin on a chain? No, no, no. I don't stay at hotels that do that. Holiday Inn Express, that's where we stayed. So I had like, they made like these really weird little omelets. So I had one of those. And then they had some pork sausages and turkey sausages. So I had one of each of those. And, um,. What else did they have? I had a glass of orange juice and a coffee. I think that's all I had. Oh no, they had baked beans, so I had a little bit of baked beans as well. It was good. It was good. Tasty little breakfast. Yeah, I didn't know why they had the beans there, but I was like, you know what? Fuck it. When in Holiday Inn Express, do as Holiday Inn Expressers do. <laughs> All right, so yeah, it's a Reaper uh, in the factory opener here from Jason. Apple Juice is just getting his Nexus, getting uh, you know, his pretty standard adept here. Cigarette omelet? What is that? Oh my god! Yeah, it is a British thing to have baked beans for breakfast. I had that when I was there too. I like to I like to try foods like that though. I tried the tasteless breakfast at a hotel once. When we're at hotels, tasteless likes to get a little bit of cheese and some bread and eat that for breakfast, like a light breakfast. I tried that at one event that I did in December. It was pretty good, actually. I was missing tasteless. Was, I, was, I was at the event alone. Legit, though. It was tasty. No, not spray cheese. You know, like a nice piece of cheese. Whatever it is. I don't, I don't know what fucking type.
There's a specific build a few years ago that had three or four re early reapers, and then you get um, into mineral line and devastate. Yeah, there's some there's some multiple reaper builds that are out right now. Uh, there's there's so many different variations of these builds uh, that it's it's hard to know exactly which one you happen to be talking about, but certainly uh, each matchup has builds that utilize more than one Reaper right now. Uh, you'll definitely see some tonight, TVZ. Like, we'll probably end up getting, like, Beyond vs. Dark or something, and then you'll really see a lot of that. Like, these three Reaper builds and stuff that are kind of neat. And I like some of the... I like some of the multiple Reapers. Uh, definitely you get three Reapers or four Reapers against Terran is pretty common, and then uh, we definitely have some builds that have multiple Reapers against Protoss. I do like some of these two, three Reaper builds. They're pretty cool. Hey guys, as far as uh, ASL English goes, by the way, I see some questions about that. Uh, the I, the group selection should really be out at any moment. Um, I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, but we'll be casting tomorrow morning ASL round of 16. I think it'll be up pretty quickly. Uh, okay, so this is not going super well for apple juice. This is some heavy damage being put out. Oh, dude. That lock on and run away, beautifully done. He's going to pull back before another warping round comes in and destroys the very hurt units he has left. We have Blink and Prism on the way. Yeah, going to go ahead and repair these up very, very quickly. That's excellent. Dude, Jason has a lot here. You're not going to get anything done with those four stalkers. Uh, the uh, observer rather is coming up to get some spotting done, but when he sees this army, he's going to know that there's like really nothing. Banshee tank marine is kind of funny. That is a ground pounding force if I've ever seen one from Terran. This is a scary force to go up against. Okay, he does have blink now, so definitely can see some very solid micro here. Wow, those were real low. Oops, little mistake there. Loses the prism. Uh oh. Uh-oh, Jason coming across the map. Could be problems here for Apple Juice. Well, this is this is pretty scary. An immortal comes up, but with double banshee here, it does not seem too likely that too much is going to occur. He drops a mule there. I don't misclick. Oh, okay. I was gonna say I don't know if that was uh like you know, manor mule people have complained about in the past, but it seems like Jason truly didn't mean to drop the mule, and that that was a misclick. So he said that out loud to make sure that his opponent knows that he's not an asshole. Now, me, if I did that by accident, I'd just be like, yeah, fuck you, get out. <laughs> but, uh, you know, some people care about their image, so that's good of him, I guess. Now, double bunker here, but not that many Marines to go in. In fact, he even gets a triple bunker. Another Banshee coming up. GG. Jason with a very aggressive push. Going to be able to take that down.